I need you to be a little bit faster with like your cubes and cube and your fourth power and your fifth power. So we're going to write them down right now. Uh, here's what I mean. Do you know what one cubed is? You're brilliant. Two cubed, three cubed, four cubed. You got to recognize these five cubed. Anybody know six cubed? No, good try. Yes. Seven cubed. Close. 243. No, you're right, Caleb. Booyah. 343. I always get that one wrong and then this the other one wrong, so that's why. Okay. These, you need to recognize these numbers. This is what sets you apart from other math people, like your regular math friends. No offense. No offense. Because they... You'd see like 27 and in your head be like, well, the perfect cube of that is like three, you know, and they'd be like, you're a nerd, shut up. But that's what you do, okay? And that's what makes you cool. That's what makes you my people, my people, okay? But that's this, you've got to recognize these. You have to start recognizing one, eight, 27, 64, that they're all perfect cubes. Now, concerning the fourth root ones, I think I, I don't go that far on four. One, one to the fourth is, anybody know two to the fourth? Very good. Anybody know three to the fourth? 81, because it's three squared, which is nine. And another three, like three times three is nine. Three times three is nine. Nine times nine is 81. What would four to the fourth be? What's 16? There we go, 256. Somebody had said that before. And then I would stop at five to the fourth. What's five to the fourth? 625. So again, these right here are numbers that you should, like, they kind of should come out to you. You're like, oh, yeah, I, I know them, okay? They actually fall on the perfect squares also. Like 25 squared is 625. Um, 16 squared is 256. They, they fall in there because they are really squares. Concerning the fifth roots... I think I stop it. Yeah, I don't do four to the fifth. So one to the fifth is one. Two to the fifth, do you know that one? 32. And then three to the fifth, this is where I was wrong before, Caleb. This one is 243. So these ones. Ooh. Okay. Why is this important? Because it's kind of going to lead us into what we do today, because you're going to have to do everything without a calculator. What? Yes. You can do it. I have full confidence in you. Of rational exponent, the word ratio just means a fraction. So we're going to have fractional exponents. We're going to have exponents with fractions. What does that mean? So if you see x to the 1 half, that means square root x. If you see x to the one third, that means, take a wild guess. You're brilliant, Bryce. If you see x to the one fourth, that means, come on, fourth root of x. That bottom number is what's called your index. So the rule says this, that x to the 1 over n to a fractional exponent is the nth root of x. The nth root comes very important in what we do today. One more thing, though. If I have x to the m over n, so if that is not a 1, it's still the nth root of x. But now it's raised to the power of n. It's still the nth root of x. It's just raised to a power of n. Another way, by the way, to write this is you could have done it like this, nth root of x to the m. That m is actually interchangeable. can go outside or underneath. They're all the same. Okay. Ooh, you can't see that. Let me move it. There we go. When you see a negative, I want you to, in your head, think of the word reciprocal. Reciprocal, I can't spell, call. Reciprocal, or flip a fraction, okay? So this is really one over x to the n. It's a flip fraction. 
why is this going to be helpful? Because if I do something like um, 6 to the negative 2, I just want to show you this is what I do in my head. I actually ignore the negative. What's 6 squared? And then because it has a negative exponent, I flip that. 1 over 36. 2 to the negative 3. I ignore it. I just say in my head, what's 2 to the 3? 8. What's the flip of 8? 1 eighth. And that's what we'll be doing today. All right. So what does 1 half power mean? What did I, we just write before? Square root. What is 1 third? Cube root. What is 1 fourth? Fourth root. So what's 100 to the 1 half? What's the square root of 100? You're brilliant. What's the square root of 81? Still so smart. Oh, but then this one, this is 16 to the 1 fourth. So what? What's the fourth root of 16? You did that all without a calculator because you don't need it. Finish this whole section. It's not that hard. What happens if I change the top of the... Well, okay, if it has a 2 in the denominator, that still means... You don't have to write this, by the way, but you can. It still means square root 100. What is the square root of 100? 10, but then the top number means that's what you do the power of. You cube it. What's 10 cubed? 1,000. Done. Let's, let's do another one. Let's do this 64 to the 2 thirds without a calculator. That means the cube root of 64. What's the cube root of 64? What did we just see on our notes that we wrote it down? 4. And then take 4 and square it. What's that? Done. It would take you longer to punch it into your calculator than for you to do it like this right now. I promise you. Let's do another one. No. Your work is this. Your brain without a calculator. What's the fourth root of 625? We just did that one before. Five. Now what's five cubed? Okay. Do these. You kind of like glance through all of them and be like, oh, there, I can do that one real quick. You know, go fast. But be, be precise. Like, okay, so this one. Oh, three fifths. What's the fifth root of 32? Two. two. What's two cubed? Eight. Done. Okay, this last one, they, they threw something at you for a reason, okay? This is what we're about to go into. So here's what I do, and this is what I'm going to show you. If I were to make this positive, if I were to do 121 to the one half, again, one half means what? Square root. What's the square root of 121? 11. 11. But because it was negative, you flip that. The answer is 111. Okay? So you do it as if it's positive, but then you flip it. Okay? So let me 111. So flip to the next page. Let's do a few of these together so you can see what I'm talking about. Pretend it's positive. Pretend it's everything you were doing on the other page positive, and then flip it. Like, number one, pretend it's positive. What's 10 squared? What's 10 squared? 100. But it's to the negative 2, so flip it. 1 one hundredth. Pretend it's positive. What's 16 to the 1 half? What's, what's 16 to the 1 half? Four, right? So square root of 16, four. But because it's negative, flip it, one fourth. That's it. Let's do a harder one here. I'll do this one. What's a thousand? No, it's to the negative two thirds. This is not a. You are just doing it positive on the other side. What's a thousand to the two thirds? Well, what's the cube root of a thousand? Ten. Now square it. 100. Do I have to flip it? Yes. Oh, it took you an extra step. But look at number six and number 12. It's okay. Okay. Let's do, let me do six with you. Okay. It's not bad. Okay. One fourth to the one half, the square root of one fourth. You could do the square root of one fourth. What's the square root of one fourth? the square root. Properties of rational exponents. I do not have time to go over these properties with you. You should have gone over them in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. But real quick, here's the main thing that everybody forgets. 
when you multiply like like bases like bases you add the exponents right I, aren't, aren't i saying something that you're like yeah i know i know five to the third times five squared is five to the fifth okay we know that when you have a power to a power you multiply those powers if you're multiplying inside a parentheses to a power, it's almost like you can distribute a negative exponent. Elevator pants. Flip it. If you divide, you subtract. And then if you, um, two things that you're dividing, you distribute also. Okay, I'm going to do these last four, and then you're going to have four remaining problems to do on the back page because if you're not doing all of them. I didn't like them. So we're going to use properties to simplify these last four. 7 to the 1 fourth times 7 to the 1 half. Are these like bases? Okay, yes, yes. then you keep the base. Keep the base. Don't write 49. O-M-G-O-S-H, by the way, because we don't say God's name in vain. Oh, my gosh. Don't write 49, you moron. You multiplied 7 times 7 as like bases. You keep the base. You add. I'm sorry, I forgot you don't know how I feel about morons. I call myself moron, by the way, when I do things stupid like that. So don't worry. I'm not really being mean. Josh, I, you know, you add them. How do you add fractions? Please tell me you know how to do that. I don't have time to roll in there. Keep, yeah, common denominator. This is two-fourths, so this would be three-fourths. Now, going back to what we just did before, if I were to convert this and say, can you take the fourth root of seven? No. If you try to cube it, though, seven cubed, could you take the fourth root? Nah, just leave it like that. That's fine with me. We'll get to more harder stuff later. All right. Part B. Are these like bases? No. no. Don't you dare be. It's 24. No. No. For the love of me. Um, but there are power and you are multiplying. So you are allowed to distribute that power. So this would be 6 to the 1 half times 2. What's a half times 2? one, I'm not going to write it, times four to the one third times two. What's one third times two? Two thirds. Okay. And again, can you multiply these? No, you cannot multiply unless they are like bases. Can I do anything here? Well, I mean, again, you could say, what's the cube root of four squared, which is really the cube root of 16, which you could rationalize down to 2 cube root 2, but that's not helping you in the problem, so don't do it. Stop. Right there. Okay? Two more. Are these like bases? No. So can I distribute powers? Yes. If this was a plus, by the way, you would not be allowed to distribute powers. Not allowed. Pluses, those are called binomials. You're not allowed to do it. But 4 to the 5th times 3 to the 5th to the negative 1 fifth, oops, um, you can distribute. So what's a fifth of 5? 1, so it would be negative 1 times uh, negative 1 fifth of 5 is negative 1 again. What is 4 to the negative 1? How do I rewrite that? 1 fourth times, how do I rewrite 3 to the negative 1? And what did, can I multiply? You sure can. You multiply across. 112. All right, last one. They actually did the first step for you. 5 divided by 5 to the 1 third. Obviously, 1 is the exponent of 5. Are these like bases? Sure is. You can keep a base. Since you're dividing, you subtract the exponents. Keep the base, subtract the exponents. What's 1 minus third? How much you got left? And again, I wish the book would have done it or this paper would have done it. It would have been nice if we were like, oh, now what's the cube root of five squared? But it's not helpful. So on the back side, you are not doing all of them. You are only doing H-I-J-K. 